Old Souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I beat the Ganji in the freaking dark on the uh, doing political commentary for the media speaks on uh, HDF people. That, it, literally, it looks like I'm talking to you like you're in a tube. Uh, HDEF over there. You're probably going to want to go to uh, youtube.com slash the correct views and watch this on low def because I, that looks horrible. I look like I'm not. I look like the invisible man. But uh, hey, the, uh, the halogens are in use and I have one set of halogens. They're used for videos and they're used for the band and they're used for the show. And we have no idea uh, even really even where the, uh, the halogens even are. So there you go. So uh, basically, a low def is going to be where this looks even remotely worth seeing. If I look like I wasn't quite prepared to go on air, that would be because I wasn't quite prepared to go on air. By that I mean, I, I, it wasn't that I would now I look like uh, Boris Karloff. Who, welcome to the show, my friends. Um, <laughs> I look like an axe murderer, that's awesome. Um, if... If something really big happens, it is my job to go on air. I have to report or comment. I guess I'm more of a commentator. I need to comment on things when they matter. So HDEF, just really, just shut the video off. Uh, low def, I'm ugly enough, shut the video off anyway. But you kind of want to hear what I'm saying. Because the elite, the 1%, the leaders of the Democrat and Republican Party, do you realize they are on the march as if this was Nazi freak in Germany. Do you understand exactly what it is that I'm talking about here? We already know, and why Donald Trump did this I'll never know, we already know that they wrote Donald Trump into signing this agreement, and I'm in a discotheque, they signed this agreement that he would not run as a third party if for any reason, Christelle diligently trying to save the set here, if for any reason he wasn't treated, or whatever, whatever, now he says, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay as a Republican. You're going to want to look at it there. They are <clears throat> literally bragging about how they are going to cheat Donald Trump out of this. Do you realize that? Now, it doesn't matter if you like Trump or not. If you don't like Trump, you don't like Trump. Fine. I'm not talking about whether or not you like freaking Trump. I'm talking about the fact that the jackboots are on the march here. Okay? Do you realize that? They're going to take away what the man earned. And if you don't think it could happen, look up Rule 40 GOP. I dare you. Look up Rule 40 GOP. You're not going to like what you see. I can promise you that. You are not going to like what you see. It's how they cheated Ron Paul. The other way they can cheat Donald Trump is to have a brokered convention. I don't have enough time on this show to explain why, but if you look up brokered convention and you like to read, then it will explain it to you. Basically, it is a way to broker a deal away from the person that should have won and to give it to the person who didn't win, who the establishment of any given party wanted to win. It's legal. Do you understand that it is legal? Because there are no laws concerning how a private organization should run. And the RNC and the DNC are the same. Now, how many of you hate Trump? All right, fine. I have attacked Bernie Sanders on this show since I heard that the bonehead was running. I really, really do not like Bernie Sanders. There is nothing that could ever make me vote for Bernie Sanders. I think he is as bad for this country as Jeb Bush, Hillary Clinton, or Chris Christie. All of them are terrible choices, by the way. Um, they're trying to cheat Sanders the same way they treated Ron, cheated Ron Paul. They're trying to cheat Trump the same way they cheated Ron Paul. And while I hate Bernie Sanders, we cannot afford this idiot, and man is not warming the planet. But I don't, I don't want him cheated. He has earned his followers as much as Trump has owned his. 
to treat, to cheat Sanders, who would make a terrible president, and I mentioned he'd make a terrible president in every possible way, to cheat Sanders, the potential terrible president, is... It, it, we can't allow it. It's wrong, and I'll tell you why. If they can shut Trump down, then they can shut your guy down. They can shut my guy down. They can just go on this shutting down frenzy, and there's absolutely nothing anybody can do about it at all. Because the Democrats are still going to go ahead and support say, uh, Hillary, and the Republicans are going to go ahead and vote for Rubio. We tried. Um, H. Def, just, I look like a, I look like Jacob Marley. Um, the, um, if only I had some chains to rattle. At the, least it's brighter than it was. Uh, uh, um, the trouble here is the establishment is going to pick who you're voting for, whether or not you like it or not. They're going to pick it for you whether or not you like it. And I'm going to get into in a moment what they said that Sanders did. Uh, I think he deserves punished. I don't think he deserves punished as hard as they're going to give it to him. But I have a theory, and this is why I'm going live. This is why. This whole sentence I'm about to say is the whole reason that I'm going live. We have a two-party system in this country, and everyone hates it. You listening to this, you probably hate it. Okay, do you realize that Donald Trump has enough supporters on the right that if he was to run third party as an independent, he would take a massive number of votes away from the Republican nominee? Okay, let's take it one step further. If he did that, then he's going to hand the election to Hillary Clinton. Unless Bernie Sanders was to run as a third party. He has a strong following on the left. Now this whole plan doesn't work if they both don't do it. You would need Sanders and Trump to both run third party. And then Hillary, and they're trying to push either Jeb or Rubio. Ruby Bush. You would have Clinton and Ruby Bush running against each other. And you would have Sanders taking votes away from Trump and Hillary and Rubio. And you would have Trump taking votes away from Sanders, Rubio, and Hillary. You would have, in essence, four parties running. And once you've taken all of the Republican votes away and given them to Trump, because now he's third party, once you've taken all of Hillary's Democratic votes and they've gone because now they went to Trump, now you have an election. Now, you have a voice. Hillary, uh, excuse me, Sanders fans need to support me on this by hitting share. I'm sticking up for your guy and I hate him. Trump fans need to support me on this. Fans of nobody in the race, people that are genuinely sick of the third of the two-party system. People that are sick of that two-party system. If you were to get Trump and Sanders, it ain't going to work if only one of them do it. But if you could get Trump and Sanders to both run third party, you would really be heard by both the Democrats and the Republicans. I promise you that. I promise you that. And I'm asking you to share this video. I'm asking you to let more and more people know and see if you can make it happen. Think about it. It doesn't work if just your guy does it or my guy does it. You need both. If they both grew a set and did that, we would see an election in this country that is between four parties and all four parties would have a chance to get in. And you would see an end of elitists 
and uh, the, the one percenters would lose a lot of their voice if this were to happen in exactly the way I laid it out. Friends, here's what they're trying to do to Sanders. Uh, raw story. Sanders' campaign sues DNC for hijacking their data and taking our campaign hostage. Basically what happened is the DNC are to blame here. Information that was not supposed to be made available was. The poor guy that got fired, we don't even know if he did it on purpose. I feel bad for him. He took data that was available, and then the DNC said, oh, no, wait, it's not available, so now we're going to punish you. Ha ha. Can you say rigged? Well, they're using this to throw Sanders out, and I, I, I hate Sanders, but I don't hate him enough that I want him cheated. Because what, we going to cheat him for Hillary? The campaign manager for Bernie Sanders blasted the Democratic National Committee on Friday, accusing them working in the best interests of rival Hillary Clinton for the 2016 Democratic presidential nomination by shutting them out of the DNC's database after a security breach. It was not a security breach. They put the information openly available online and then yelled at them for taking it because the glitch was on their end. That's bullshit. Speaking to the press, Sanders campaign manager Jeff Weaver admitted that a campaign worker accessed Clinton voter files on Wednesday due to a brief software glitch, which was not Sanders party's fault. According to Weaver, they don't have any evidence that the staffer downloaded any info and that by freezing them out, the DNC has prevented them from accessing some of their own data. It's our information and the information of all those volunteers and people who support the campaign, not the DNC's. In other words, by their action, the leadership of the DNC is now actively attempting to undermine the Sanders campaign, and they are suing them over it, and I think they should be. This is what the establishment does. So am I sticking up for Sanders? Yes. I'll attack him like I always do next time. He's not getting attacked on this show. It'll be the only time it ever happens because I can't stand the man. He's an idiot. All right. I didn't make it all the way, but I tried. He's an idiot. However, if they can cheat him, they can cheat the next person that you like, that I like. Yeah, it's real easy. They did it to Ron Paul. Did we stand up for Ron Paul when they did it? I did. Did anybody else? Hell no, they didn't. They just sat there and watched sick of it. That's why I want this to happen. Hit share on this video. Make it happen for me, friends. You listen to The Correct Views. At, uh, you can donate to it at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. I'm going to go ahead and go over the war on Christmas here, I promise. I just want to let you know it's brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, one of the best fictional writers extant today. He does political commentary. He does poetry. He does horror stories. You're going to want to check him out. I'm going to play a little bit of this while I'm reading it. We're going to talk about all of the uh, attacks on Christmas that we've seen. Here's the 12 bands of Christmas as we read. The first band of Christmas my campus took from me. The first band of Christmas, of course. In the interest of conveying uh, an inclusive holiday spirit, let me open this in another window so you guys can... It appears, however, the inclusive guidelines have been removed at oh, well, Ohio State University that says students and staff should avoid using red and green. Second ban of Christmas, nativity scene. While it's not an outright ban, the University of Wisconsin Extension instructs members of the school co the community to not erect an alone nativity displays. B.S. It's a Christian holiday. If you don't like it, then don't look at it. The display of nativity scenes of menorahs has generally been upheld by courts against legal challenges if they appear as part of a larger display devoted to the celebration of pluralism. Third band of Christmas, the mistletoe. As part of the, prime, the premier fire safety guidelines for holiday decorations, Cornell University lists guidelines for exclusive seasonal displays. In addition to decorations with religious connotations, of which they have no say in and need to get their damn nose out of it, such as angels, crosses, and stars of David, the document also identifies mistletoe as a display that is not consistent. Well, they can go to hell. Christmas. Fourth band of Christmas, Secret Santas, oh yeah, as part of its list of suggestions for hosting holiday celebrations that are sensitive and respect though to individuals who can go to hell, because if you don't want to participate, then don't. The State University of New York, Brookport, encourages students and faculty to consider a grab bag instead of a Secret Santa. Fifth band, Religious Christmas Songs. 
At James Madison University, the student government informed a student a cappella group at the last minute that they were not allowed to do Mary Did You Know at the school's annual tree lighting ceremony because the song represents a specific religion. Good. It's supposed to represent Christ at Christmas. If you don't like it, you don't have to go, bastard. The sixth band of Christmas, the star of David, I am pissed. Going a step further than the UW extension guidelines, the University of Kentucky issued a blanket prohibition. I, must, I misspoke. Against the public display of any religious holiday decorations, including nativity scenes, menorahs, crosses, and the star David. Seventh band of Christmas. The cross and crucifix. At the University of Mary, Washington, employees are allowed to place holiday decorations in their workspaces, but those decorations must be secular. What if you are Christian and you want to flaunt it, which is your right? In nature, unless strict conditions are met, only a private workplace, which is neither shared with other employees, may you do it. Eighth band, menorah and dreidel. dreidel. The guidelines issued by the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, have perhaps attracted the most negative attention at all. In order to build upon a workplace relationship of team morale, if you're not a Christian, then you don't have to go. The school's Office of Diversity and Inclusion recommended a holiday party should never include religious or cultural games. Well, you can take your recommendation and put it up your ass. We're going to do what we want, whether you like it or not. The ninth man of Christmas, of course, the name of Jesus, in addition to other types of religious decorations. Different types of Missouri State University also identifies drawings of Jesus or Muhammad as examples of religious items that are generally inappropriate. No, you infringing on our right is generally inappropriate. There is a separation of church and state that means you cannot endorse a religion. That does not mean you cannot display a religion. Please try to learn how to read. Please try to pay attention. I have very little patience for a stupidity. The tenth man of Christmas, religious icons. As part of its efforts to promote diversity on campus, Rowan University's Office of Equity and Inclusion published guidelines informing employees that office decorations are allowed as long as they are not obvious religious icons. Again, it is none of their business. It's allowed to be an inverted cross if they want it to be. That is a display of whatever religion you want. The 11th band of Christmas, the workplace Christmas party. The University of Ill, Illinois, Springfield took things a step further than most schools, directing their advice to employees generally and offering up tips to make sure your holiday party isn't a Christmas party in disguise. It used to be that being inclusive meant sending out PC Happy Holidays greeting cards, which was BS and I never did it, and changing Christmas offered parties to holiday parties. Today, it's about more than just changing labels and titles. So if they even suspect that it's a Christmas party, they're in trouble. I say you put a cross on your forehead and refuse to let them say a damn thing about it. It is time to stand up for your religion and refuse to capitulate. Refuse. If you know you are right, then do not back down. Because people who are saying things that are not right, they do not get equal say as you if you are right. They do not. There is right and there is wrong. And if they don't like it, that just means they're more wrong than they were before they opened their mouth to say it. That is the correct view. Twelfth band of Christmas. I am so sick of stupidity. Stars atop the tree. Although decorations featuring Santa Claus figures and dreidel meet the University of Richmond's guidelines for holiday decorations, the star is not consistent with either of these guidelines. It's none of their business. Their guidelines need to be thrown away. That's what needs to happen. And if you don't do it in droves, it's only going to get worse, friends. We, we, might, we might hurt the Muslims Children sing Allah Akbar at Minnesota Public School Holiday Concert. Gateway Pundit. Yeah, they'll probably be beheading people next week. The Minnesota Public School is singing Allah Akbar at the annual holiday slash Christmas concert. A school in Minnesota at the center of the controversy right now because the holiday school concert included a song in Arabic with the Allah Akbar, which of course means God is great. CBS, uh, parents question the choice of the Allah Akbar at the holiday concert. Some parents 
at the Anoka Hennepin School District are questioning a choir teacher's decision to use a song about Ramadan performed in Arabic. At Thursday's night concert at Blaine High School, one of the songs students will be singing includes Arabic words, such as Allah Akbar, meaning God is great. Christian and Jewish songs will also be performed. So I don't have as much of a problem with this as I do some other stories, which we're going to get to here. Let me play a nice little piece of blasphemy for you. Video! Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet. Canadian children, as you can see on Fact Cam, sing Mohammed worship song, and the PM tweets his approval. Did he tweet his approval for Silent Night? Ever? That's my question. A video, which you're watching, shows Canadian children singing a song which celebrates Mohammed's arrival in Medina after he forced Christians to convert to Islam under threat of death. How many of you don't know this? The Crusades were not Christians attacking those who didn't share their views. That's a lie. The Crusades were Islam butchering Christians till they had to fight back in order to stop it. These children are singing praises to some of the greatest butchers in the history of mankind. This is not equality. This is damn near Satan worship. The video clip which you're watching that piece of garbage behind me was posted on YouTube one day after Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Ontario Premier Kathleen Wynne personally welcomed 163 Syrian refugees into the country. It was over 11,000 thumbs up and more than 1.2 million views, although the comments were disabled. Yeah, because they don't want you saying, they're criticizing their holy shrine here. The video entitled Welcome to Canada Syrian Refugees shows the choir, as you hear, singing one of the oldest songs in the Islamic culture called Tala al-Baldu Aliana, which is sung to the Muslim prophet Muhammad, who is so sacred you must not draw him. Upon his arrival in Medina after completing the Battle of Tabauk, where he butchered people for no reason. You look it up on Spicer. In reality, the composition is an original work by Ottawa-based composer and musician Laura Holly, but it is indeed influenced by Tala Abaraliana. So in other words, they're now writing new praises for Mohammed. When's the last time we wrote a new praise for Christ that was allowed to be done? I'm sorry, Christ must not have had sex with enough children to be included. Yes, I said it! Ottawa Citizen reports that the piece concludes with a section influenced by traditional Muslim call to prayer blended with Tatala Abu Aliana. Holly also denied that the theme was a welcome to refugees, but Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, piece of human garbage, tweeted his approval of the song. Let's get a little bit of history here. Thank you, PJ Dunn. The Battle of Tabak was a military expedition. It was a jihad to present-day non-Western Western Saudi Arabia led by Mohammed with the intention of fighting the Byzantine army, which was not present when Mohammed arrived 30,000 strong force. The Quran refers to the battle by calling on Muslims to fight and kill non-believers until they play the jizya for not uh, being uh, submitted to Islam. The jizya is a crippling tax on non-Muslims, which are Muslims in force. It's currently being imposed on Christians in the Middle East by ISIS under threat of execution and taking their wives as sex slaves. So you're not allowed to sing about Jesus Christ, who never slept with any children. But you are allowed to sing about Mohammed, who slept with children on a regular basis. That's known as uh, pedophilia, by the way. A pedophile gets songs sung to him, just like ISIS does when they steal your wife or tax you to death. Kind of hellhole is Canada becoming. 
after Muhammad and his army in Talbuk, Jewish and Christian tribes in the area where Muhammad was converted to Islam. While Muhammad also sent out a letter to Christian Prince of Ali Aleha threatening him to convert to Islam, pay the jizya, or be killed. They are fascist bitches. Yes, I said it. Sing a praise to that, swines. In summary, the children are basically singing a song that celebrates the subjugation and submission of Christians to Islam by the sword after thousands of Muslims migrated and stole, took over a large portion of the territory. Given this history, perhaps it would have been less provocative to have the children simply chant Allahu Akbar instead. Yeah, and might I add, maybe beheaded someone. <laughs> and that brings us to the Dumbdy of the day. <laughs> if I seem like I'm in a bad mood, it's because I was just DJing a club where everybody was really nice to me, but I had to listen to hip-hop like Fetty Wap and drink for like seven hours. If I ever have to DJ in hell, at least I know what it'll sound like. Prison Planet, December 14th, public school hosts walk a mile in her hijab day. I think this is an opportunity for kids to embrace the Muslim community within the school. No, now see, I've heard of this uh, wheel a mile and they'll put you in a wheelchair, and you have to spend a day in a wheelchair to understand what it's like for people who are in a wheelchair. I'm in favor of that. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because if you're in a wheelchair and you're paralyzed, you really can't just get up and start walking. You have no choice, and people may not understand what it's like to be you. Well, let me tell you why. You can take the freaking hijab off, you dumb woman. Take the hijab off, join the 21st century, burn the hijab, and we welcome you to the side of sanity. An Illinois high school held a walk a mile in her hijab because she was too stupid to take it off. Walk a mile in her hijab event last week in an attempt to help students better understand the Islamic religion. We don't want to understand the Islamic religion. If you're Islamic, be Islamic. Quit trying to force it down our throat. We are not some child waiting for Muhammad to shove something else down our throat. Yes, I said that too. According to Daily Herald, six members of Vernon Hills High School Muslim Student Association spent Wednesday morning placing hijabs on 17 non-Muslim girls. They should have burnt them. You can't really understand or judge a person and their beliefs until you understand why they do it and what it's like for them to do it and what they're doing, says Yasamin Abdallah, the group's president. If she doesn't like it, take it off. Quit wearing it. It's really easy. Moron. Hoping to make the events a yearly occurrence, yeah, that'd be great. Abdallah said the reaction among students was mostly positive. Yeah, if they're on crack. With only one student, probably not on crack, reportedly yelled, telling a non-Muslim girl to remove her hijab. I'm telling anybody that doesn't want to wear a hijab, remove it. It's real easy. It comes right off. You'll be amazed. Was it stapled on you? Moron. This event is hopefully a denounced negative stereotypes. No, it just proves that you're so stupid you can't take the hijab off, so other people have to be sympathetic to you. I am on fire today. The school's principal, John Guillaume, praised the affair, so write him and tell him he's an idiot, as a great opportunity for students to better understand the school's Muslim community. That's great. Now, I want to see the Muslim students walk a mile with a crucifix on their chest. <laughs> what? No, what? They did it. Why? Why not? Why not? I want to see Muslim students spend a week lighting the menorah. How about that? I want to see Muslim students spend a week studying Buddhism. That's what I want to see. I want to see them light Buddhist incense. How about that? I think it's a difficult time to be a Muslim. Then don't be a Muslim. You're listening to the correct views. I, I'm going to get off air before I cuss more than I already have. You're listening to the correct views. The low deaf died. Sam I. B. DeGangie doing a re 
political commentary for the media speaks and damn their outer darkness. And you can donate to the show at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give me goes towards a better show. And since you can't see anything, I guess I need a lot of money, don't I? Good night.